Welcome to the Supermarket Tour with Paul and Austin. Since both of us live in the core of downtown Toronto, we're familiar with the retail strategies and marketing ploys that companies usually use to compete for our attention. What we came to learn, however, is that it's not just clothing and electronic shops. Grocery stores are targeting us too. From the second you walk into a supermarket, you are being manipulated. From the sounds you hear, the aromas you smell, and the products you see, all of these things tell a story, and the message they want you to hear is simple. Spend money. Paul and I wanted to experience this for ourselves, so we decided to visit Loblaws on the corner of Church and Carlton. Loblaws is one of the five major corporations who control the majority of the food retailing sector in Canada. Join us now as we venture through aisle one of the supermarket tour, going to market. We're heading to the store now. Welcome to Loblaws, everyone. Right away, we just get a big eye of colorful produce. Off the top, a lot of hustle and bustle. Everyone's talking. You can hear the packages being ripped at the deli, also right beside us. As you can hear in the background, there's music playing. Now, if you're like Paul and I, you might have considered the music to be something of an afterthought, just something that would mask the sound of shopping carts and cash registers, but it's actually a lot more complicated than that. Supermarkets like Loblaws will usually purchase a playlist of music that is specifically engineered to subtly influence our purchasing decisions. This music comes from a company called Muzak Holdings, and so the term Muzak has come to be a generic word describing ambient soundtracks used in retail. The company will take popular tunes and edit them, removing any extreme dynamics, making sure they are a consistent tempo, and essentially creating music that will encourage patrons to feel good and take their time. After all, the longer you shop, the more likely you are to buy things, even if you don't need them. The music wasn't too loud right at the beginning when we walked in through the front doors, but as you enter into the produce section, uh, it gets a little bit more prominent. It's very soft as well. I think it is the holiday music, just a little bit. Oh good, starting already. <laughs> it's the beginning of November. If the food looks good, people will want to buy it. This is especially important with perishable goods like produce that stores want to sell quickly. It's called eating with our eyes, and in North America, we've been trained to do it our whole lives. The most perishable kind of food items are just the first you see when you walk in. Uh, things like carrots, we've got things like tomatoes as well. They go ripe real fast. Um, it would be quite obvious to have them at the front, so that's reasonable. And the way they're set up on the shelves is pretty uh, organized, methodical. They look good. They look like something I'd want to buy. Okay, so I just want to pick up a couple random vegetables. See, what, let's see, like if I can find any real bad onions. So they all kind of look picture perfect so far. Yeah, stacked up nice. <laughs> there's, there's no, there's no moldy spots. There's no, they're all intact. Very uniform as well. Placement of the products is important too. We hit the fruits and vegetables right off the bat and then had to move through to the far back corner of the store to find staples like eggs and milk. This forces the consumer to pass by all the other products as well. And now getting towards kind of the meatier areas, right now in the fish section. And now we're just entering the beef and kind of pork area. We entered kind of on the right of the store and we're moving left now at the back. Some saxophone music playing. It's really relaxing right now. I don't know. I don't know if it would make me want to buy anything just yet. <laughs> but I am relaxed, so that's one thing. Yeah, I don't feel like I need to move quickly. Okay, now they're okay. They have different music for different sections. I guess that's just speaks to how big this Loblaws is. Yeah, I don't know if you heard the shift there, but it was the smooth jazz in the uh, in the meat section. But now we've got smooth jazz and meat. We, we have successfully arrived kind of at the very back diagonal corner from the entrance. Our staples, all the milks here. And now we're at the eggs. Okay, so we, we successfully had to go all the way around to find my eggs. And if we keep walking the perimeter, there should be a pharmacy at the back. Now look at this, we got the medicine uh, that's meant for the kids near the, I guess, middle of the shelf. Okay, right on vitamins. It's not just the layout of the store that supermarkets are concerned with. Shelving real estate is a big deal too. Products at eye level tend to sell better, so brands pay a lot of money to claim those spots. 
Likewise, food meant for kids is placed lower on the shelf so they can see it. Now, maybe in one of the dry goods, I'll just walk on my knees for the entire aisle and yeah. see what I can pick up. <laughs> So hopefully people don't look at me funny, but I'm gonna walk on my knees. <laughs> All right, so it's very bright down here. Uh, you pick up a lot of colors, a little more so than I would stand up. So right away, I'm looking at a big caramel bar. It just caught my eyes right there. A lot of chocolates. So designer chocolate is definitely above a child's eye level. And whereas the very bright, crispy crunch caramel is way down where kids can see it. Kinder eggs. All that kind of stuff. Labels facing out. And it, now, the checkout. And it looks like as soon as you check out, there's obviously just one direction you can go. And as soon as you walk through there, you have to hit a Nutella cafe. We basically went around in a circle and had quite the variety. Okay. Good job, Loblaws. And just above here, there is also a Joe Fresh and an LCBO. So you got everything you want in the same building. We're just exiting now, back out onto the street. That is what I call one-stop shop. It's surprising to realize how much effort actually goes into creating the ultimate shopping experience. And it's also interesting to note that the tactics are not necessarily there to improve the customer's experience, per se but rather they are used as tools to extract as much profit from the visitors as possible. So I've got Paul here with me and uh, we're just gonna talk about quickly, what were our expectations coming into the supermarket tour and how did those change afterwards? So Paul, um, give us some insight. All right, so I'll just give my perspective on this. When I first saw that big sign saying Loblaws, my initial reaction going into any supermarket of that sort is, I'm just gonna go in here, nothing's gonna affect me, I'm gonna throw my headphones in, I'm just gonna go get what I want. So that's what I had kind of going into this. I didn't think any of this would probably affect me in the slightest. And I don't know if it was the same for you. I knew that supermarkets wanted my money, but I didn't think that they went to such lengths to do it to the point that they would mess with me subconsciously. Okay, well, something I know that affected me the most was I actually looked into past experiences walking into this very same Loblaws because I live in the area. One of my most common buying patterns is I go to the veggies and then I go get almond milk, which is back where all the other staples are, such as regular milk and eggs. But something I've noticed is whenever I'm going back to the cashier, I always pass by this organic section and something with kimchi. And now I've come to realize how much just walking by that section and getting an eyeful of kimchi really made me want to buy kimchi. And I've bought kimchi thousands of times. Okay, maybe not or else I'd be broke. But the general concept still remains. It hit me in such a way that I didn't even realize I was doing it at the time. Okay, another question. After reading through this pamphlet of the supermarket, do you agree with all of it? Or maybe there's a, a thing that you kind of disagree with from personal experience or external knowledge from this? I think it's true. Um, all the things that it talked about and the different ways that uh, supermarkets will present their products. Uh, however, I think that it comes across as extremely biased and coming from the perspective of supermarkets are evil. They have no uh, respect for us as consumers. I think that that is kind of the vibe that came off uh, reading this this pamphlet. Whereas I think that supermarkets have a lot of positive aspects to it. The fact that you can get everything in one place that you need it. It's convenient. It's quick. Like I know for a fact that that Loblaws is the only place I go to buy hand soap. So it is definitely the most convenient thing I, I think I've ever come to experience. So I can't help but agree. After reading this all through, it's really reinforced what I want to do versus what they want me to do. I, th I think uh, a development of a plan is certainly starting to come into play for me personally. Like, things to avoid being lured by, you know, making a list, checking it twice, find out if those products are naughty or nice. <laughs> <laughs> I had to, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was Christmas. Great. Yeah, I definitely... It's opened my eyes a little bit to just, when I go into a store, not just to accept things as normal, but to realize that there's a lot of other things going on. Nothing is by accident. They've taken into consideration every single aspect of my experience, and they've twisted it in such a way to manipulate me without me even knowing. So it's kind of, they got it down to a science, and the whole process is just to make me spend my money. So yeah, like you said, making a list and making sure I stick to it so that you don't get distracted and end up spending way more money than you even intended. The supermarket tour, and specifically aisle one, 
going to market has been a very enlightening experience. Just going in and taking the surface level and bringing it a little bit deeper to understand kind of the things that are going on right in front of our eyes that we may not even have recognized as being special tactics and strategies that these supermarkets are using. This experience has given Paul and I a deeper understanding of the lengths that supermarkets will go to to get our money. Despite big name companies wanting to reduce us to mindless consumers, we now know that they're trying to manipulate us every step of the way. That's not to say these companies are evil, but they're just exactly that, companies. Businesses trying to make a profit from commodifying the food that we need to survive. Thank you for joining us on our supermarket tour, and we hope that what you learned today will help you on your next shopping trip. Thank you, and stay informed.